Hello people, this is Bear from Bear Collector and a bit of a different video today. Now, first of all, I don't want to create any beef, uh, but you know me guys, I'm a mathematician. I, I like to talk facts when I say something and I don't say the word I think, but this is this, that is that. I always do it when there is data, there is evidence to support it. So now, all respect to, to Alex from Nostalgia Genomics. He's a great guy. I like his attitude. I like his, you know, the way he spits out things. Uh, I think is is a great YouTuber, great PokeTuber. But I, I'd also think that given the magnitude of his channel, because after all, 10,000 10, people is 10,000 people. I think that calling him out when it does say something incorrect and highly misleading for people who, who are his subscribers, his viewers, it's not a bad thing to do. Now, again, Twitter is human, as my ancestor would say, you know, the Latin uh, raro manum est, that's what they would say, to err is human, and uh, I'm sure it just uh, it just said it, it just probably didn't do that much research. After all, he is a Pokéuber, he is ma mainly focused on Pokémon, and he might have not put out too much time to, to research on this YouTube product, which he's talked about. So basically, what I'm talking about is his last video, which is titled, Why Are Your Pokémon Investing? On a performant and we also um, reflect on on what he says about it basically the main thing I want to point out that is misleading and it's incorrect is he points out how this set 25th anniversary collection number two because there, there was a previous one is pre-selling for roughly $120 in the American market now full disclaimer there's also this set in the European market, but the booster boxes are different. In the American market, you have 18 packs, as it says right here, whereas in the European market, you have 24. Now, same again, same. You have nine cards in both packs, both on the EU and the American side, just different number of packs. Now, that's not important. What is important is that he emphasized that a Yu Gi Oh set is pre selling at $120. And he said, if you're used to Yu-Gi-Oh! and you used to know how newer set pre-selling, they usually pre-sell somewhere between $60 and $80. Now, that is true. However, in doing that, he emphasizes on how Yu-Gi-Oh! is now on, on a run. It's There's hyper on Yu-Gi-Oh! People want Yu-Gi-Oh! There's a lot of demand and that drives prices higher. Now, that's completely incorrect. The reason why this box is pre-selling for $120 is that MSRP is higher than what well, you could say it's the main set. Now, Rarity Collection, if you don't know, briefly is basically a reprint of all the staple cards played in the meta as well as some collectible cards. And they're, as the name says, they're printed in different rarity that are in the Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Now, if you take a look at another newer set that is coming out in about two weeks, I guess your destruction. You can see how Alex is right. It is pre-selling for eighty dollars, and they usually tend to pre-sell between eighty and sixty dollars. Now, what he doesn't mention, and that it's misleading because it's again, he's emphasizing that hundred and twenty dollars. Like Yu-Gi-Oh is on a hype. Yu-Gi-Oh is on a bull run. All these TCGs that are not Pokemon are doing great. Well, it's it's it really isn't because MSRP. And I'm quoting Pojo.com, so I'm saying out my source. MSRP on these packs is $9.99. MSRP on Legacy on Destruction is $4.49. Now, you have, well, let's do the math together. You have 24 packs on a main set. So in this case, I was in Destruction, 24 times $4.49, 107 that's what it's retailing for MSRP. Whereas on the Red Collection, you have 18 packs and they're selling at 9.99, so 179. So you have an MSRP of $179 against a MSRP of $107. Now that's simply because they're pre-selling for much higher than we used to. There's no hype. So again, Alex, I know you, you, I know it wasn't important. I know you you weren't shilling Yu-Gi-Oh. Just a genuine mistake. It happens. What I recommend is always do your due diligence before talking to such a large audience. Now, to finish out the video, he also 
I want you to, to, do, to say my take on uh, these other known Pokemon TCG that are doing well, apparently. Now, obviously, the main one are One Piece. Now, I see there's also been a new Star Wars Unlimited TCG, and then there's Lorcana and MTG. Now, I just want to briefly talk about One Piece and Lorcana, especially One Piece. And there's also a newer version of uh, Dragon Ball TCG, Dragon Ball Fusion World, which is opposed to Dragon Ball Master, but just want to briefly talk about One Piece. Now, first of all, the question is, is the extreme growth in these newer TCG healthy? Is it sustainable? Does it come from genuine demand? Or does it come from a lack of supply mixed with a good amount of demand, which comes from a good player based, collector based, or is it mainly because of, again, a lack of supply and a lot of people want to ride onto the next wave? Now, that's question number one that you should ask yourself. And one thing, one other thing I wanted to point out is money doesn't, it, it just doesn't come out of, out of thin air. It, it usually moves. It goes from A to B. Now, one example I want to bring out, and which has nothing to do with uh, TCGs, but it does have to do with, with the market, the stock market, for instance. Now, if you take a look at the end of 2021, when the U.S. stock market topped, so if you look at the indices, the S&P, the NASDAQ, that's when they topped. Now, as I said, money doesn't, it, it comes and goes. If it tops and everything went down, it means people were selling. If they were selling, they were exchanging, let's say, shares for cash. Now, where did that cash go? Well, that's, well, you could say some went into bonds, possible, some other gold, commodities, I don't know. But take a look at the Turkish index, the best 100. Look at what it has done while the American indices were crashing, crashing. Look at what the Turkish index done. Again, money comes and goes. If it goes out of somewhere, it will most likely go into something else. Why am I saying this? If other TCGs crash, then is it possible that that money, if they crash, it means no one is buying them anymore. They're, they're all selling if they find buyers. And uh, those who can liquidate their positions, then they, they they exchange obviously product for cash. Now, where does that cash go? Is it going to go into more stable and historically less riskier TCGs such as Pokemon? Because Pokemon has one of the largest historical data alongside uh, MTG. Or are people going to be afraid of TCGs? They've been burned with newer TCG, Lorcana, One Piece, Dragon Ball, and they don't want anything to do with it. Now, those are the two scenarios. Which one is it going to be? I have no idea. If I were to tell you one or the other, I would be lying. Again, thank you guys all for watching. Alex, I don't know if you're going to watch the video. Probably not. If you do, again, nothing against you. Just wanted to point out that if you're talking to a large audience, always make sure to do your due diligence and uh, keep going while you're doing because you're great at it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.